So we have the Pixis 6K, the box camera that everyone has been asking for. I have a couple thoughts on it. But before I share these thoughts, I actually got an interview with Dan May. He's actually over there. <laughs> if you want to like my camera. Dude, he's a man. So he's the president of Black Magic and he was sharing his thoughts on this camera. I asked him a couple questions that I was really wondering about the articulating screen, internal NDs. And it was really interesting hearing his thoughts on it because they made me understand Black Magic and there might be a future camera. You heard it first, folks. Don't get this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm here with Dan May. He is the president of Black Magic Design. This is a huge launch. So he's going to brief us a little bit on it. I'm going to ask him some questions that are a little bit proby, but I, I think you guys want to hear and he'll hopefully have answers. <laughs> he'll hopefully have answers. So you could just take it away. Sure. So yeah, Black Magic this year, it's a big year for us. Um, I feel like it's been a few years since we've had a real like flex with our engineering capabilities. Yeah. Like, you know, we've had some great years where we've come out with like a really dope camera or we get a cool ATEM. Resolve's always big, we're always pushing Resolve. Yeah. I feel like this year, like I said, it's a, it's a real big effort to put huge Resolve update, two huge camera announcements. Huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got this whole new live replay solution that ties so many of our products together, uh, making a big 2110 push. like. Just, like I said, just a really big push across a lot of engineering fronts to really come to NAB and just show that we've been really busy and we have like really big aspirations for what we want to do with the industry. So it feels like it's been a few years since we've had that pandemic did not help with a lot of that kind of yeah. stuff. Supplies, us being able to work, just all that kind of stuff. So it feels like it's been a minute since we've had this kind of a big, yeah. big like wow moment for Black Magic. I've been working with different brands and whatnot. I can really tell when a company is genuine about wanting to change things. And I feel like this announcement, you guys have shaken the market a little bit. I do want to touch on the Pixis camera because sure. I think that's where most of my audience will be. Yeah, you got they're, it. Not, they're not getting the 12Ks, 17Ks, sure. <laughs> no. most likely. I have a couple questions with the 6K for me personally, sure. and some that, that my friends have as well. Why the screen? Like specifically, and, and I'll give you them both yep. just so, and then uh, what was the complication with the internal NDs? Cause I know everybody's like, oh. Yeah. So like the, the two easiest answers, and there's probably more engineering answers that even I don't really understand. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think the two big things is for a camera like this that you want to be able to, and this is almost gonna sound a little contrarian, like you want to, we wanna make a camera that can be rigged up any way someone wants to rig it up. Yeah. And that means that not everyone is going to need ND filters in the situation that they're going to. So it's always that, it's always that sensitivity to not adding so much that people don't need and giving them what they want. And in a camera like this that you're gonna be able to build up the way you want, you could just add the ND filters. Now, the contrarian part to that yeah. is, but you've added a monitor. Yeah. And I think the reason you add the monitor is you're saying, because I also want you to pull it out of the box and be able to use it. Yeah. And if I don't have that monitor there, that means you've got to get other things in addition to the lens yeah. to, to make it work. So the idea now is, hey, I could pull it out. I've got all my menu settings, screen things there. Even if I am gonna change and make it be different, I have the ability to use it right now. And then I can rig it the way I wanna rig it. So why no articulating monitor? Like kind of, and and cause there are design aspects, but specifically like the Ursa. Mm. So I, I actually own the Ursa G2. Yep. And I don't attach a monitor all the time because I can just flip it out and see it while I'm, so what was the, the mentality by it? In my opinion, I was bummed about it, but I, I'm I, still probably gonna buy it. I, I, think, <laughs> I think it's just, a, it's a lot of things like the design, the cost, how yeah. much you're gonna get in there. Yeah. Um, and then it, like, if you, put the, if you put something like that in, are you overbuilding it in a way that no one's going to, so like, I'm sure all of these things get debated out. And you know, like the hard part with ours is there's not really a right answer. There's the answer that you go like, look, I think this is the best because it's going to X. And there's gonna be a group of people that say like, yeah, but I wouldn't want it that way. Yeah, but there's another group of people that do want it that way. So you're always constantly trying to balance out like, well, I'm not, I'm not charging people necessarily for the screen, even if they don't use it. Yeah. But I'm also not overcharging for maybe ND filters if people don't need those ND filters. So I would have loved ND filters. Hey, hey, hey man, good news. You can still add them yourself. So, you know. Uh, so here's, here's another question. I know this isn't like the easiest thing to talk about because it's, it's probably like 
it, it, it is the buzz, like with filmmakers, at least that I know. Sure. I, maybe it's news to you, I'm sure it's not. But, um, so with ND, I personally think even just having NDs in there, like I would have paid four grand for this camera yeah. if it had NDs, you know, like all these different things. But was it a thing where the costs would have gone up yes. a lot, a lot? I don't uh, look, I, I'm probably not the one that's yeah, qualified yeah, to say yeah. to say as much, but like obviously the cost goes up. You know, one of the things that Blackmagic does a lot differently, 90 plus percent of the time, is we're saying we want to build this camera and we want to hit a price point. So yeah. I always think about the original pocket camera, and that's a great example because it was like, how do we build the best cinema camera for a thousand dollars? And that, and yeah. that, you, and you really have to work hard to get there, and that sometimes does mean making some of those sacrifices to get there. Yeah. And I don't necessarily know per se if we were saying, look, we got to get to that three thousand dollar mark. We don't want it to be higher than that because we feel the volume, all of that. That might be one of the reason. It might be other design choices. Yeah. It might be because we've got seven more versions of them packed out for the next 10 years. I don't know. Like all those things are possible. That's my next question. Wow, well, I don't, yeah. I, you know, the, 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 one of the challenges with Black Magic is always the, look, you wanna buy the product that you want for today because it's gonna do the job you want. If you're, I, if I'm gonna go and buy an iPhone, I can't buy an iPhone thinking that the next iPhone is gonna be a better iPhone than the one that I'm buying right now, yeah, yeah. because it is. It is gonna be that way. And if you were someone that bought a pocket camera last year, but now you see Pixis and go like, I'm so mad they made a better camera. I've got bad news. All the cameras going forward are going to be better cameras that we make. Yeah. But also I'm not trying to charge you 3x what the camera value is in our eyes for yeah. that. So, but this is the fine line of like, there's not a right not answer to all this. Yeah. And it'd be different if we were a company that was like, hey man, we make one camera every five years. Like, okay, that's cool. You could invest in that camera. You can know all that, but that's like not who we're gonna be. Just like a graphics card, just like a other computer part or a phone, we're constantly gonna be pushing it. You're meeting certain price brackets like for people and budgets and different things like that i have one question though yeah so and you don't you could say hey i can't answer that or maybe maybe just like twitch your eye or something <laughs> just give, give me so um you made the 6k yeah the pocket 6k the cinema 6k no just the, the pocket, pocket 6k, 6K. the yep, pocket sure. 6k <clears throat> and then a little later you made the 6k pro yeah with internal NDs, and it made sense. It was more expensive, yep. but people were drooling over that camera. Dan, I'm to, people will drool over yeah. this camera with internal NDs, literally off the shelf. So, so, so it's so look, all of our product roadmaps are are flexible to some degree, right? Maybe we did have that internal debate about a particular feature, and you go like, look, we made that sacrifice because we wanted to make it affordable, or we wanted to make it in volume, or it was the quickest path to market for us to not have all this extra stuff on it. But man, we did really hear that or other. So like, it was a little frustrating, like, you know, in that kind of similar like way, like we, we came out with the cinema camera 6K, which is essentially the same feature set of the Pixis camera, right? It's the same yeah. sensor, it's the same functionality. And people said, man, that's that's really cool, this full frame 6K camera. Yeah. We'd really love it to be in a box camera. Why didn't you do that? And you'd be like, well, look, this was this was the fastest way yeah. for us to get to market with the technology using all this stuff. Yeah, but I'd really love it in a box camera. Yeah, but this was the fastest way for us to get to the, but why didn't you do it in a box? Because this was the fastest way to get to market with this technology. And at the end because, of the day, yeah. Because I can't yeah. go out and say, yo dog, just hold up, we'll get there eventually. Because I don't, the reality is I don't know what eventually means. Is eventually six months from now? Is eventually 18 months from now? And that's yeah. that other hard part is we don't want to go out and being like, yeah, don't worry about it, we'll make another version. Because maybe we won't. Maybe we get caught up in some other big thing that we have to do. Yeah. Maybe we'll have five more versions in the next five years. We don't rightly know ourselves because it comes down to some of that feedback. What do our other product lines need? What else are we trying to accomplish as a company? Obviously we come to these shows, we're engaged, we try to be tuned into what people want and what people need. And and like, that's what makes shows like this exciting is not only did we the show that what we did, but then we also got to figure out, well, did we explain it right? Did we do the marketing right? Did people engage on that product the right way? So these shows are so important because we get that feedback. We get to talk about what we did right, what we didn't do as well, what we can do better. So like, these are all really important things for us for what we're going to do next. But that's also why it's hard for me to be like, it's yeah, a, dog, don't worry, we're going to get there because we just don't know. <laughs> we just we just don't yeah. know what those things are ourselves. Can I just on video give you a, we're done with the questions. <laughs> no more no more questions. But I would love to share just certain, certain feedback that I've heard from my sure. filmmaking friends that are like in the industry and myself included. You know what would have been amazing? Tell me. And I might not even put it in this thing. Yeah. But like, 
even if there is a Pixis Pro where it's like, hey, it's a Pixis Pro where so you know how other, other ca cameras, you know how other camera brands they have their proprietary screens because I know yeah. you have a USB C thing for the viewfinder, and they're like thin, they're lightweight, mm. and they control the whole camera. I would even pay a ton of money for that. Like Red, they charge like three grand for their monitors, but just to have something that's integrated within, I can. Now I have my monitor. I don't need to have. You guys can cut cut whatever. I don't know how this works, but yeah. you guys can cut costs on the screen and all the V mount, all that stuff, internal IDs. I'd pay a lot of money for that. Yeah, I mean, these I think all those internal debates that we have about like yeah. how overbuilt do we want to make it, how flexible do we want to make it. But I think for this one, <coughs> there was that desire yeah. to yeah. have a not high cost but fully yeah. functional camera. Yeah, and that was the goal of this. And then what goes after this is kind of like well, Dan. You're the man. I I appreciate you. I appreciate you answering my questions. Yeah, a lot of good. some of them were a little, a little intense. It's like, it's but, but I, I do appreciate your time. We, and we want to be a transparent company, so yeah. it's not like we don't want the questions. But obviously, we have to work out some of these things ourselves, yeah. and there's only so much we can say some of the times too. But we always appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate it, Dan. Thank you so much yeah, for your time. You got it. All right. All right. So my specific thoughts on the Pixis 6K. Uh, I, I don't, obviously don't own it, but I don't understand this screen. I really don't know why it's not articulating. I know some people are like, oh, it doesn't need it. It's a certain camera. But if it had it, then I would have the option to use it without a monitor. I could literally just stick a handle on here, switch out the screen and use a camera like this. It feels amazing. It really does feel so good. Uh, I don't care for BPU, but I'm excited for camera companies to make a BPU to V-mount accessory, then it'll just be perfect. The camera overall is really sick. I don't think I'm gonna buy it. It does solve a lot of the issues that I had with the Cinema 6K, but it's just not for me. I don't really understand this screen. I don't understand why they didn't put internal NDs. But like you saw with the interview, they're probably gonna make this like the Pocket 6K and then the Pocket 6K Pro is gonna have the internal NDs. And this camera with internal NDs is Pretty close to perfect. But yeah, those are my thoughts. I figured I would get this video out for you guys here at NAB. Lots of hustle and bustle. But anyways, I'll see you in the next one.